Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at our second type of particle accelerator, which is the linear accelerator or LINAC. So let's get into it. Now it's common for you to see a question on linear accelerators in the exam, and these can be shortened to LINAC for short, where we've got LIN from the word linear and AC from the word accelerator. And it says here that a linear accelerator consists of hollow metal tubes, also known as drift tubes, placed in a vacuum. So if you look at the diagram here, you'll see these sections of hollow metal tubes. And it says that charged particles, for example electrons or protons, are accelerated across the gaps between the tubes. They do not accelerate within the tubes. So it's across the gaps, i.e. from P to Q here, and then from say here to here, and from here to here, that the charged particles are accelerating. The charged particles themselves are not accelerating within the tubes. And it says that this is due to the electric fields created between the metal tubes by the large potential difference from the supply. So you see we have a 2.5 kilovolt alternating supply, so that would be 2,500 volts. And we're seeing that this potential difference creates an electric field between the two metal hollow tubes at each point. And the whole idea is that our charged particles can be flowing along this linear accelerator as a particle beam. And remember the point of a particle accelerator is to actually accelerate the particles, is to speed them up. So how do we actually do that and how does it work? Well it says here that a high frequency alternating supply continually changes the polarity of the tubes to ensure that the direction of the electric field is correct when a particle passes between the gaps. And this ensures that the particle beam always accelerates in the same direction. So what do we mean by this? Well, the word alternating supply tells us that we're going to have current which is continually changing direction, i.e. an alternating current. And that means that the polarity of the tubes, i.e. whether it's positively charged or negatively charged on the metal, will continually change back and forth. And this ensures that the particle is going to be accelerated between the hollow metal tubes across the gap. So I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So if you look at this linear accelerator, you'll see the hollow metal tubes which are increasing in size and we'll also get negative particles going in. So this could be electrons, for example. So if I click play here, you'll see what happens with the high frequency alternating supply changing the polarity of the hollow metal tubes. So when I start it again, you'll see that this first hollow metal tube changes to a positive charge to begin with, so that the negative charges are attracted towards the positive charge on this tube. And when this one is positive, the next one is going to be negative, the next one is going to be positive, and the next one is negative, and so on. That is our alternating power supply. But then when the electrons reach the end of this first hollow tube, they're going to want to be accelerated across the gap towards this tube. And in order to be accelerated, they need to be attracted towards it. So that means that although this one was initially negatively charged when this first one was positively charged, then the polarity is going to change so that the sign of this hollow metal tube becomes positively charged and the first one can go back to negatively charged. So we would have negative, positive, negative and positive. That means the particle has reached the second tube and can then travel through the tube where it's not accelerating within the tube, remember. And then when it reaches the end here, again the charge on this third tube would want to become positive so that it can attract the negative electrons from here and this tube itself will become negatively charged and that's going to repel the charges away from this one and towards this one which is now positively charged. So that's what is going on here and it's happening all the way along until the particles get to the end of the tubes. So if I click play here you'll see what's happening with the acceleration of the electron across the gaps and also with the changing polarity of the sign of charge on the tubes. So if the tubes didn't change polarity or sign of charge, i.e. if we didn't have an alternating supply, then the charges might reach, say, the first hollow metal tube and then stop because the next tube might not have the charge that is going to attract it towards it. So for the electrons, for example, if this first tube stayed positively charged, then the electrons will want to stay there because they're attracted to that positively charged plate and they'll not be repelled away from that tube either. So this is why it's important to have an alternating supply and this is something that you could be asked about in the exam. So if you were asked why they need a high frequency alternating supply in a linear accelerator, you could state one of these two things. You could say that it continually changes the polarity of the tubes to ensure the direction of the electric field is correct when a particle passes between the gaps. Or the one that might be a bit easier to remember is this one here, to ensure that the particle beam always accelerates in the same direction. So we want the particles in this case to be accelerated towards the right. Another question you could be asked is why are the tubes different in lengths? Why do they increase in size? Well, we say that the tubes are different lengths to allow for the increasing speed speed of the particles. As the speed of the particles increases, they travel further in the same time. And that should make sense that if you're traveling at a greater speed, you should be able to cover a greater distance in that same time. And by having longer and longer tubes, 
we say that the particles will spend the same amount of time in each tube regardless of its length. This means that the speed of the particle beam can be controlled, which is necessary for different collisions. So in a particle accelerator, we want to be able to accelerate the particles that we're using to a particular speed. And by having the increased lengths of tubes as the particles go along, we're able to ensure that the particles can travel a longer distance in the same time. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.